Hi, Chem students. Welcome to video four in your matter series. I am starting today on page five in your note. Make sure to have out a highlighter and something to write with so you can take good notes. Okay, so I'm starting today with energy. Energy is the capacity to do work. Energy is used to make things happen. It is best understood by descriptions, not by definition. Some categories of energy are described below. So we have kinetic, potential, chemical, thermal, electrical, radiant, and nuclear. And you can read those on your own. One that I want you to see a description of here is potential and kinetic energy. So when the lady is standing at the top of the hill, in this picture, she has potential energy holding the ball. When she drops the ball, this is potential energy transforming into kinetic. So kinetic energy is when the ball is actually moving. Okay, so the law of conservation of energy states that the amount of energy in the universe is constant. In other words, energy can be converted from one form to another, but it's not created or destroyed in the process. Um, so energy transformations. Here are some examples. I've got chemical energy from food going into kinetic energy of motion, a person eating an ice cream and then riding a bicycle, like in this example. We've got radiant energy turning into chemical energy, radiant energy being from the sun helping a plant grow. Um, chemical energy turning into kinetic energy of motion, so gasoline going into a car. And electrical energy turning into thermal energy would be plugging in your stove, for example. A really great video that I highly recommend that you watch on our website is this Bozeman Science video. It's about four minutes long, so I don't want to play it on top of my video, but after this one's over, I highly recommend watching it. He does a great job giving examples of energy transformations. Okay, so here's a good example of energy conversions. It says, can you trace the energy conversion that occurs starting with the sun's light and ending with a rabbit hopping? Okay, so we're going to start with sunlight. This is radiant energy. The sunlight is going to cause photosynthesis to occur in carbohydrates in a carrot, which store chemical energy. And then the rabbit is going to eat the carrot, and the rabbit's going to be able to hop. So this is kinetic energy. So we're seeing radiant energy turn into chemical energy, turn into kinetic energy. The next one in your note says, what about the energy conversions that occur starting with the sun's light and ending with a car driving down the road? I want you to try that one on your own. So another thing I want to talk about is thermal energy and the different ways it can be transported. So there's three possible pathways. We've got convection, conduction, and radiation. First, I'm going to focus on convection. Convection is the transfer of heat energy in a gas or liquid, so not in solids. It's by movement of currents. The heat moves with the fluid. So a good example of this is at the beach, Hot air rises and cooler air from the ocean comes in to replace it. And then the cool breathe cools your body. So that's a great example of convection. Next is conduction. Conduction is the transfer of heat energy through matter from particle to particle. The materials are actually touching during the transfer. So I would highlight or underline touching in your notes. Conduction is most effective in solids, but it can happen in fluids as well. So for example, a chemical reaction occurring inside of a test tube causes the test tube to heat up and it makes the glass hot so you shouldn't touch it. Another good example is the animation I have here. A person is touching a really hot skillet that's being heated. So conduction is happening between the person's hand and the hot skillet. Okay, lastly we have radiation. Radiation is the transfer of heat energy by electromagnetic waves. Radiation is the only form of heat transfer that can occur in empty space without the aid of solid liquids or gases. Sunlight is a great example of an electromagnetic wave. It travels through space via radiation. So anytime we use light or sunlight, think radiation. So for example, a lamp spreads light through the room. Okay, from your notes, 
How is thermal energy transported in the following examples? Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure these out. When you come back, I'll have the answers up. Okay, welcome back. A beaker on a hot plate becomes warmer. This is conduction because the beaker is actually touching the hot plate. Remember, it has to be touching to be conduction. The pilot light in your car illuminates a map. Radiation, like I said, any time we talk about light, think radiation. And then hot soup transfers heat to the air above it. This is convection because it's happening in a fluid. It's moving from a liquid into a gas. The last thing I wanna address in this video is chemical reactions. And this is really important because you're in chemistry class. So these are some really important pieces of vocabulary I need you to know all year. The starting materials are called reactants. So the stuff on the left, those are reactants. The ending materials are called products. So the stuff to the right, those are products. So they're separated by an arrow that points to your products always. Reactants go on the left, products go on the right. The reaction reads left to right just like a sentence. So super important that you know this. The law of conservation of mass states that during a chemical reaction, matter cannot be created or destroyed. This means that the original atoms can move around and find new partners. All of the original atoms that were in the reactants will be present in the products as well. For a chemical reaction to be balanced, the total number of atoms of each element to the left of the arrow must be equal to the total number of atoms of each element on the right side. So your reactants must equal your products. To be able to prove the law of conservation of mass, we need to be able to calculate the total number of atoms of each element on both sides of our reaction. So to do that, you need to know the difference between a subscript and a coefficient. It says, drag the pink circle around all the subscripts in the formula. So our subscripts are these guys. It sounds like submarine, right? It means below, sub, below. And then drag the blue circle around the coefficients in the formula. The coefficients are these big numbers in front of the entire molecule. Notice that in this one, there isn't a coefficient. It's understood that this is a one. Now at the bottom of my page, it says to calculate the total number of atoms of each element, we multiply the coefficient by the subscript. So how many atoms of carbon are on the left-hand side of the reaction above? So to figure that out, I'm going to multiply the coefficient by the subscript. Again, when there isn't one, we assume that there's a one there. So I would say there's six carbons on the reactant side, and then on the product side, I have six as well. Remember, the coefficient would be a one. So one times six is six. How many atoms of hydrogen are on the left-hand side of the reaction above and on the right? Remember, the left side is called the reactant side, and the right side is called the product side. So we're looking for hydrogen. I've got six times two, which would give me 12 on the reactant side. On the product side, I've got one times 12, which gives me 12 on that product side. And then lastly, we only have one more element left. How many atoms of oxygen are on the left-hand side and then the right side? Okay, oxygen. Oxygen is a little bit more challenging here because I have it present on the reactant side in two different compounds. I've got it in the carbon dioxide and in the water molecule. So I'm going to do 6 times 2, which gives me 12, plus, see this little plus sign? We're going to add them together. 6 times 1. We're assuming there's a 1 there, which gives me 6. So 12 plus 6 is 18. So I've got 18 oxygens on the reactant side. Let's look on the product side. Again, I've got oxygen in two places, so we add them together. I've got 1 times 6, which is 6, plus 6 times 2, which is 12. Again, 6 plus 12 is 18. So we can see that on the left and the right side, the number of atoms of each element are equal. It says this balanced equation illustrates the law of conservation of mass. 
Another way to illustrate the law of conservation of mass is to show that the reactants equal the products. Literally, the mass of the reactants equal the mass of the products. So if we look on our reactant side, we have 264 grams of carbon dioxide and 108 grams of water. When I add that together, I get a total of 372 grams of reactant. On the product side, I'm just showing that my glucose weighs 180 grams. We don't know how much the oxygen is weighing. Well, this side has to equal 372 grams also. So what I can do is 372 minus 180 to figure out what the oxygen weighs. And I find out the oxygen is 192 grams. Now I want you to work through this problem all by yourself in your notes. Go ahead and pause the video. When you come back, I'll have the answers for you. Okay, welcome back. So this reaction shows magnesium plus hydrochloric acid reacting to form magnesium chloride and hydrogen. So we're supposed to count the number of atoms of each on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. I have the answers here for you. Hopefully you saw that the law of conservation of mass was proven here. It says, provided the following masses, solve for the mass of magnesium. Well, hopefully you added 95 and 2 and got 97. And so if the product side equals 97, the reactant side also has to equal 97. So what must this equal in order for that to occur? So magnesium must weigh 24 grams in order for the reactant side to equal the product side. Okay, that concludes our Matter and Change series. You now know everything you need to know for your test, so feel free to go back through some of these videos if you need a little brain refresher. I hope you do well on your test and that you enjoyed these videos. Have a great day.